Hello, hello, welcome back to Zarnock Gaming. My name is Trenton Von Zarnock, and today I'm going to be doing a video about Gibba Scraps on the current season L3, which will be for season 43. And just taking a look here, we just knocked Gibba down and of his 666,400 health, managed to do a hit for 429k. Taking a look at the heroes we're going to be using, I don't have any of the heroes I used today up to D3 yet, or anything past what they've been at recently. And I'm going to be bringing Archimedes, Yark, Bellator, Ionchi, and Shozel. Now, yes, for me, these heroes are D2, and some of them have level 50 actives or passives for their summons. Uh, but as we all know, for Gibba Scraps, it's all about getting the hits in, and this is a strategy I really feel that anyone can follow. So let's jump right in and take a look. Um, a big key to this fi fight is going to be getting five summons from Yarex active uh, right away on turn two, and making sure we get snap a record down uh, the way we're going to handle this is by starting archimedos on the left so that archimedos can reach and summon on snap and provide blood letters as sort of a fodder for the cadian guardsman so that's not a guaranteed kill there but if we do not get the kill with shozel again if your shozel is not as strong as mine uh yarik and bellator can both come into these two tiles and help clean up uh, Yark will almost certainly be enough to help clean up. But because we don't need to use Yark to clean up, we get a lucky range hit off there. And as you can see, the, uh, the enemies focus all the blood letters and Gibba always takes this high ground spot that can be fully surrounded. So now our big key is not letting him move. He will love to move up to other high ground, someplace where it's harder to pin him down. Um, so there's a chance that uh, your Shozel won't be able to kill Snapper right here, but if you don't, you can use a ranged attack from Archimedos from high ground here and actually not only get a smite hit off on Gibba, but get a blood letter right here and then move Archimedos in the following turn. We'll go ahead and summon and then we're just going to cover the high ground melee spots where he could move to hit somebody from and we're going to keep him near this low health Cadian Guardsman because we know that's going to be his target. And we get an unlucky flea, but that's okay. Our Shozel drones take care of the rest of the tanks for us. And now we can worry about locking him in this spot and making sure we never let him move. It's really important that you put Bellator in this tile to spawn because as Gibba Scraps hits your, your units really hard and kills them, your Inceptors are always going to move to the most favorable tiles. So if you spawn with Bellator from here and your Inceptors end up here, here, and here, these two Inceptors are going to want to move. This Inceptor will move as someone dies to get off of the barbed wire. This Inceptor will move just to get to high ground. So... First, he'll kill someone on low ground over here who's not an Inceptor, not as beefy, and this guy will move, and you won't be able to get your Bellator over for extra hits, and then he'll kill someone else who's squishy and isn't an Inceptor up here, and again, you'll lose an Inceptor, and you'll lose those extra hits. So it's really important to summon from right in between the two non-negative high ground spots here, because those, those Bellator summons aren't going to move no matter what. And we get our second uh, Yark summon. We refresh Yark on the last turn with Eonji. And get a third drone up. Now we're really caking up the damage. We're going to go from 63k to 148k right there. But this is where it really starts to pile in. And so you're just going to go through, get your hits, get your extra hits from the Bellator summon. And you can see we do a massive jump from 148 all the way to 267. And 
here, the melee, the Bellator summon, like we predicted, leaves the barbed wire and goes over there. And that allows us to move Yark in and keep him locked into melee. And now he should hit Aeon Shi for the rest of the battle. Maybe Bell, maybe Yark, probably Aeon Shi. I don't actually remember. Oh, he goes for Yark. But it's the last round. As you can see, we got another huge hundred and something thousand damage. Um, and now we're going to go and we're going to get to what is actually one of the most important parts of hitting Rotbone and Give Us Scraps, in my opinion, which is doing the math. And the math is actually pretty easy to do very quickly so that you can share with your guildmates on Discord what your run's going to be. And so all we're going to do is count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 for this bell tour summon hitting twice, 19 for this bell tour hitting twice, and then 20 for my final hit, which is going to be Aeon uh, Shozel. For some reason, I always hit with Shozel last. So when I clicked on Shozel's damage prediction here, it showed he was going to hit Gibba for 1,300. So I look at the current boss health. 298,300. I subtract 1,300 from it, and it's going to be 297K. And I'm going to mentally add 1,300 to my current damage to about 269K. And I'm going to go ahead and pull out my calculator. So we have 297,000 left times 1% times 20 hits plus the 369,000 I've already done. My estimated damage is going to be 428,400. And so I can go then onto my Discord and share with my team that that's my estimated damage output and go ahead and get my final hit. And 429, right about perfect. So it's a great run that can be used. Um, obviously, there's some other options if you don't have Archimedos. You can go ahead and pull Give Us Scraps uh, down into Rivas's Overwatch. And uh, by using Shozel to kill the same tank on the left side and then placing Rivas in that tile and activating Overwatch. Um, but you'll definitely get uh, more units up front by using Blood Letters, even if your Archimedos isn't very powerful. And then just making sure you clear out, summon, and surround. Anyways, that's all I got for you guys today. Uh, I'll continue making more videos. Uh, if anybody would love to put in my referral code, if you're not level 25 yet, gum 29 do So thanks for tuning in, and happy hunting out there, guys.